By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are back in Zaandam, the Netherlands, for episode number five of round number five of the Zombie Cup number two. And this is actually the last round in the Swiss series. And we're going to see me in action playing against the organizer Derek. I am playing with a mono red deck called Goblin Bowl. It's Goblin Tribal. And I'm taking on Derek's deck and he's playing with a deck called The Underworld. It's a zombie deck. So we have two tribes here going against each other. Very old school, goblins versus zombies. Let's see what tribe uh, will rule here. Now, before I start with the deck deck section of this video, I would first like to point out that, as always, you can also choose to go to the games first. I know some people prefer to do that. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below because there you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG Games. So if you click on there, it'll take you straight to the games. And in that same description below, you will also find a link to the Timmy Talks Patreon page. So if you like what I do, if you enjoy my channel, please consider sponsoring it by becoming a patron check out patreon.com slash timmy talks okay now that you're fully informed we're going to start with the deck text i'm actually going to start with my deck goblin bowl let's take a look okay. and here you see my deck goblin bowl now this deck is named after the goblins in here it's really goblin tribal and the ball lightning so i'm also playing with chain lightning and lightning bolt i kind of love how that sounds like ball lightning chain lightning lightning bolt it makes sense, doesn't it? And the story of this deck is that the goblins are out for an ultimate party night. There is a Blood Moon, a card again that's also in this deck. There's Thunder, you know, the Bull Lightnings are out. It's just chaos, chaos, chaos. And that means the goblins are here to party. And that's exactly what this deck wants to do. A cool thing to note here is I've got a lovely uh, altar in this deck made by Buddy. Um, and you can find him on Instagram via Viking Altars. And he's made this lovely David Bowie altar. Of course, David Bowie is the Goblin King in the movie The Labyrinth. And uh, yeah, that's what the inspired this altar. And I thought it was so cool to have it in this deck. You know, this whole idea of having an epic Goblin party. And my opponent is basically an uninvited guest at the party. So I'm going to kick him out as fast as I can. And I'm going to do that Goblin style, right? I've got so many one drops in this deck, right? I've got a play set of Goblins of the Flark, a 1-1 one, one creature from the dark, a Goblin with Mountain Walk. I've got three Goblin Balloon Brigades, also one red to cast, a 1-1. One, one, and for one red, you can give it flying. I have, of course, four Chain Lightnings, four Lightning Bolts, all with the casting cost of just one. I'm also playing with four Black Vices. Black Vices are basically just, you know, my, my extra... Uh, bolt. That's why they're in there. I, I just hope to find one in my opening hand and it's kind of a bolt for free and against some decks even better than that, right? If you can get a lock going, maybe with your Blood Moon, a card that's also in this deck, you can kind of get something going. So, I mean, with this deck, if I'm not playing anything out on turn one, I probably shouldn't have kept a hand. You know, and if I do, then maybe I'm going to keep a bolt in hand to play that on the end step of my opponent, right? On his, on his life total. All the, all the direct damage in here I want to point it to my opponent. I don't want to play it on his creatures. If I'm playing it on his creatures, it probably means that something's going wrong. Although, of course, in this matchup, maybe I have to face some Dark Ritual one-drop creatures that maybe I have to deal with with a Bolt or a Chain Lightning, but it's not really my my preference. Now, uh, the rest of the deck, again, it's all about hurting your opponent. So I've got four Copper Tablets in this deck. So Copper Tablet is an artifact that reads, at the beginning of each player's upkeep, Copper Tablet deals one damage to that player. So if you're already playing a deck that puts your opponent under pressure to life total, right? Then Copper Tablet is really good. Every turn, an extra point of damage guaranteed. Like this, this proves to, this card proves to be much better than like adding extra goblins, for example. Like this really works much better. Uh, talking about goblins, I am of course also playing with four Goblin Kings. Goblin King works really well in this deck together with Blood Moon. Blood Moon is going to make sure that my opponent always has a couple of mountains. Goblin King is going to give my goblins mountain walk, so they're unblockable. And remember, Goblin King in these days is also considered a goblin. So if I have two Goblin Kings in play, they give each other plus one, plus one, and mountain walk. So that's pretty sweet. And then, of course, the only creature in this deck that's not a goblin is the Bull Lightning. Now, Bull Lightning, it's an interesting card, and it, it actually had a big impact on the design of this deck. Uh, one of the reasons that I don't play with Mishra's Factory's main is because of Bull Lightning. I want to make sure that I can play this card out at turn number three, right? I want to put full pressure on. And I think that that Bull Lightning, the card doesn't see a lot of play at the moment because, you know, people always like to play Factory. People like to play multiple colors. That makes the, the Bull Lightning more difficult to cast, obviously. Um, and also another problem is Maze of If. Maze of If being unrestricted, more and more people are playing it. 
Meaning, you know, ball lightning is vulnerable to that. If there's one mace, you cannot really play out your ball lightning anymore. But the good news is, of course, in this deck, I'm playing with Blood Moon, and Blood Moon is an ideal answer for those uh, mazes of if. So I think ball lightning really works in this deck and uh, and can do a lot of cool stuff. But that's the reason why I'm playing Mishra's Factories on the sideboard. So for example, if I've used my ball lightning, um, you know, in, in game one, and it's obvious, and my opponent is going to start to sideboard against it, then I'm going to board it out, and I'm going to board Mishra's Factory in. Um, you know, some players also play with first strike creatures, like Elvish Archers, or Black Knight, or Stone Throwing Devils, uh, you know, White Knight. If my opponent is playing with any first strike creatures, then I usually also board the Bull Lightning out. So there are some situations where Bull Lightning is not ideal, uh, but still, I think in this deck, you know, if I can hit my opponent once with a ball lightning, it's huge, right? Because my other cards will do the rest. So I just need one hit, and then I'm usually there already. So yeah, this this deck is very very explosive, and it's it actually it's, it's a lot of fun to play. It's not as simple as you think it is. And the reason I say that is that almost against every opponent, even a power deck, you get really like close to killing them, but really close just doesn't cut it, does it? Like you're eventually are gonna lose quite a lot. And then you keep wondering like, what could I've done better? What could I've improved? Um, now there is one card that I haven't mentioned yet that's really cool. There's a one-off in the deck, it's called Eternal Flame. Eternal Flame, two red and two to cast, a card from the dark, uh, a sorcery. And it's, it's really sweet because it says deal an amount of damage to your opponent equal to the amount of basic mountains you control. And obviously I'm playing with 20 basics uh, in this deck, but also take half of that damage yourself. So if I have four mountains, I take two damage myself, but that's, that's not really important with this deck. And I deal four damage to my opponent. And that's of course a big deal. So for four mana, I can deal four damage, which is great. It's a great bang for your buck. And if I, if I find it later in the game, sure, I'm going to deal more damage, hopefully have more mountains. So, I mean, Eternal Flame, I just think it's it's really good. Um, I'm not going to say it's underrated, you know, because I don't think it is. But in this deck, it, it kind of works. Anyway, uh, this is my deck. Now let's take a look at the deck of my opponent. And here we see the zombie deck of Dedek. So Underworld Zombies, named after two cards here. Of course, all the zombies in the deck, the creature type, and the Underworld Dreams. Dreams. We see four Underworld Dreams in this deck. Now, Underworld Dreams, a card we're seeing a lot at this tournament because there's a lot of black, uh, three black to cast for an enchantment that simply reads, every time your opponent draws a card, he or she takes a damage. And of course, those Underworld Dreams work together really well with the Howling Mines that are right next to it, right? So three Howling Mines in the deck. It's quite interesting when I'm looking at this list because um, he's not playing with any Relic Barriers. He is playing with one Black Vice that can work quite well with the Howling Mine, but he's not playing with Sinkhole, for example. So he, he's made a lot of interesting choices. There are a lot of like pretty cool cards actually in this deck, and it's, it's a mix of a lot of strategies. Because if we look at the zombie section of the deck, we see, of course, four Zombie Masters, two Black and one to cast for this 2-3 uh, Zombie Lord that uh, grants all the zombies Swamp Walk and one Black Regeneration. This card is often used with cards like Cyclopean Tomb and Evil Presence because then you give your opponent a swamp, your zombies have Swamp Walk, so they're unblockable and you can win that way. Another strategy that you see often is uh, people play it with Nevenerals Disc, you blow everything up, all your zombies have regeneration, so you don't lose your zombies. So interestingly here is that we don't see Evil Presence or Cyclopean Tomb. I guess at this tournament, it doesn't really matter that much because so many players play with, with Swamps, but what if your opponent doesn't? Then it can be quite awkward, you know? You get Swamp Walk to all your creatures, but yeah, doesn't really matter. Um, I guess, I guess though, a lot of people splash black as well for Demonic Tutor and Mind Twist, so a lot of decks in old school do have black mana. So I can kind of see that work. Um, then we're seeing one Neverneural's Disc here in the deck, so not like a full four or three. So it's just kind of a side strategy, a sidestep strategy, not the main strategy. So it's quite interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of liking this list because there are a lot of one-offs, a lot of two-offs, so you get a lot of diversity in the game. I mean, for example, there's this force field in there that you're like, okay, why would the force field be there? It's quite interesting. I guess maybe to kind of stop the flying creatures. We also see an Islet of Vakvak, Vak, for example, in the sideboard. So um, yeah, talking about the sideboard, I mean, Cosmic Horror is in the sideboard. That is absolutely epic. I really hope, Dedek, let me know in the comments below if you've played Cosmic Horror in the, in this tournament and how often. I mean, I love seeing that card in your sideboard. It would be super cool if you could uh, play it as well. Uh, looking at the main again, by the way, we, we do see some, uh, some interesting one-offs, like, for example, the, um, um, oh, what's it called again? The Oubliette, right? It's called Oubliette, I think. That's that 
card from uh, Arabian Nights, Enchantment, two black and one, and you can put target creature in the Oubliette and it's considered out of the game. It's exiled until Oubliette leaves the game. So that's quite interesting. One of the things you could do, it's maybe a little bit far-fetched, but use your Oubliette to take a creature of your own, put it out of the game, then pop your disc, destroy the Oubliette, and then of course that creature comes back into the game. So it's kind of a way to save a creature as well. It is a bit far-fetched, especially since you probably have uh, regeneration on your zombies anyway so you don't really have to do that talking about popping the disc there is a card in here that i want to highlight that's cabo ghoul cabo ghoul is a card from arabian nights one black and two to cast for a one one uh, that reads on your end step put a plus one plus one counter on the cabo ghoul for each creature that's uh destroyed this turn or that is it destroyed or is it oh that died this turn so it doesn't have to be destroyed um, but that's quite interesting, right? Because it means it's got something called a delayed trigger. So um, if you have your Cabo Ghoul in your hand, you can, for example, pop your Neverneurl's disc, destroy all the creatures on the board. Let's say there are six creatures died. Then you can play your Cabo Ghoul. And then on the end step of that turn, the Cabo Ghoul will get a plus one plus one counter for each creature that died. So in this example, if six creatures died, it gets uh, six plus one plus one counters. It's all of a sudden a seven, seven. So a lot of cool stuff can be done with Cabo Ghoul. I mean, think of combining it with Wrath of God, uh, Inferno, Neverneurl's Disc, just everything that kind of wipes the board, uh, Hurricane, Earthquake, you know, play it after that, get a huge zo a zombie. I think it's, it's super cool. Okay, this is the deck of Derek. We already looked at the deck of his opponent, and that means we're ready. Let's go to the match. Game number one of round number five at the Zombie Cup. So on the right, we see Dedek trying to show his hand. By the way, couldn't see it. <laughs> He's playing mono black zombies. And I'm sitting uh, playing against him here with my mono red goblins deck, Goblin Bowl. Look at that hand. I've got a vice. I've got a goblins of the flark. Also a bowl lightning. And I think I saw an eternal flame in there as well. And here we see a turn one zombie master by Dedek. And that's kind of bad for me because it means that my vice is kind of worthless now. Dedek now has, I believe, five in hand. Oh, maybe he took a mulligan as well. I mean, look at his hand. Looks like he only has three cards in hand. So for me, that vice is uh, useless. Playing out a Goblins of the Flark here. 1-1 one, one, Goblin with Mountain Walk. There's the attack for two. So I'm probably going to drop you to 18. And I just have to hope that he doesn't find another uh, zombie master because then they give each other regeneration that's going to make it really difficult for me to get rid of the zombies of course my focus should be on hurting Derek, but i mean he's doing a pretty good job just three cards in hand so the vice is not going to work and now he's attacking with his zombie master it does look like he's not going to play anything else out so at least that's good news no walking dead for example walking dead a card for a, a one black and one a one one zombie and you, you can regenerate it for one from legends here's the attack with the goblins of the flark so i'm gonna put a dedic here on 19 let's see what else i can do okay there's at least another goblin so there's a goblin balloon brigade that can fly over the zombie master hopefully next turn i can find another mountain that i can cast that uh, bull lightning that would be quite kind of sweet I, I would be able to deal six points of damage there's the attack here by dedic so taking two more gonna drop to 16. There's another zombie master. So this is kind of the, the thing I worried about. You know, now they're going to give each other regeneration. That's going to make it really difficult for me to get rid of them. Let's see what I can do. Play another red. Okay, there's a chain lightning on one of the zombies. Attacking with the other two. So I don't have mountain number three here. That is kind of annoying. Because remember, I have that bow lightning in hand and also that eternal flame. Eternal flame is four to cast. So five cards in hand. I know one of those cards is a black vice, which is useless. And one is a bow lightning and one is an eternal flame that I cannot play out. So only two other cards in my hand. I wonder what they are. Perhaps a, a blood moon, for example, that will be totally worthless in this scenario as well. So despite the fact that uh, Derek took a mulligan here, probably a double mulligan... I mean, he's still doing quite well. He's on 17, I'm on 16. He's got three swamps, three cards in hand. Let's see what he's going to do. I see a couple of ghoul there in his hand. I believe that's four to cast. Gonna take damage here from the zombie masters. I'm gonna drop here to 14. 
I mean, that zombie master is doing work. Ooh, there's a stone throwing devils. I mean, that card is so good against my bow lightning. Oh, so even if I draw into a mountain, I cannot use that card now anymore. Oh, and there's a paralyze. Actually, paralyze here does work. And I can't even attack with the Goblins of the Flark because of that 1-1 one, one Stone Throwing Devils. That 1-1 one, one Stone Throwing Devils is really ruining my plans here. Oh, man. Now, I wonder what card I found. Hopefully, for me, it's going to be... Uh, maybe a Mountain and a Goblin King? That would be kind of okay. Not great, but... Yeah, it looks like I'm really in the tank here, trying to find a way out. I mean, if you're playing this, this deck that I'm playing, and you're just exactly passing the turn without doing anything, that's like horrible. Oh my, this is not going well here in, in game one for me. There's the attack into the red zone. There we see a lightning bolt. Okay, I'm playing it on the zombie master. Taking damage, going to 13. Tapping three again. There's a Cabo Ghoul. Okay, so Cabo Ghoul is not four to cast, but three to cast. The cool thing about the Ghoul is it gets a 1 1 counter at the end of turn for each creature that died uh, that turn. So it is now a 2 2. That is pretty sweet. Yeah, and of course, we're still we're still enjoying our beers. This, this, was, this is round number five, so we're kind of at the, at the end of the day here. After this match, we have uh, the finals. And if I win this, I'm actually guaranteed in the finals. But if I lose this because I've, I haven't lost a single match yet, then I'm probably still in the finals. But we'll just have to see and wait first. This uh, match, of course, game number one here. Playing out another um, goblin. Uh, another paralyzed, though. I mean, Derek's doing really well. His deck is looking really good against mine. i got to be honest here. Taking three points of damage now. Look at that, dropping to 10. Finally mount to number 3. Am I going to play the Bull Lightning here and attack? Yeah, there it is. It was in my opener. Finally found it. Attacking here for 7. So going to put Derek here on... Uh, he should be on 10, right? Anyway, passing the turn. And now, of course, the Cabo Ghoul should get a counter from the Bull Lightning. Should be a 3-3. Three, three. So hopefully we're going to find find that out. I'm going to take damage here. I'm going to drop to 7. So I should go to 6 here. Playing a little sloppy. The thing is with the Bull Lightning, because it always goes out of the, the game at the end, you think, oh, it's, it's, you know, it's not a creature. But of course it's a creature. It's not a direct damage spell. I think, I think it's something that we're discussing maybe right now. Anyway, let's just wait and see. Yeah, I think we're talking about the life totals here. <laughs> exactly. So I'm taking an extra point, going to six. But Derek actually doesn't want me to take the extra damage. I mean, he's such a nice guy. It's a, you know, this is this tournament. It was so cool. It was so friendly. It was just, it was a lot of fun. And also, I, I really enjoy these classic matchup goblins versus zombies. It's just, just cool. Cabo Ghoul, beautiful card. Anyway. I mean, it, it, it does matter, though. You know, these, 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 these points, especially with these type of decks. Well, let's first see what I do. Okay, here's an Eternal Flame. I mean, this is risky, right? I'm going to take two damage as well. So I'm going to go to five now. Should be on four, actually. And I deal four damage here to uh, to Derek. So he's going to drop to seven. I can attack him, put him on six, but then he can attack me back for four. I'm going to go to one. <laughs> Looks like I'm doing it, though. Like, I'm going all in. I wonder what I have in hand. I mean, do I have something to still win it? I mean... If he attacks now, I go down to one. So I've got one last turn to try to make this work. There he goes. Gonna put me on one. Oh man, this is nice. We're in full top deck mode. I mean, if he has a drain life, it's over. 
But I'm hoping to get a turn, to get one last shot to try to make this work. He's going to tap two black. Ooh, there's a Walking Dead. So now he's got a blocker for if I attack with the Goblins of the Flark. So that's not great for me. Now I'm thinking, do I want to untap one of my Goblins to chump? And of course I don't because he's got three creatures anyway. Oh, showing the card. Nope, that's a mountain. Taking the mountain. Can I do something with that? I mean, even if I have a fireball, I'm not going to make it. Attacking here. Block. He's going to block. He's going to regenerate. regenerate. I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make him work for it. going to tap four. There are two copper tablets and a vice. Yeah. Nope. That's not going to work. Dedek here winning a game number one. Yeah, I was hoping, I guess, to find a bolt there. But then still, I wouldn't have made it. Okay, if, if, okay, if, I, if he wouldn't have played out a blocker... Um, then I could have attacked with Goblins of the Flark, would have put him on 5. Then if I would have found a Chain Lightning or a Bolt from the top, I could have played that out and played out the Copper Tablets and then he would be dead. But that's... yeah. Mm -hmm. I think... Yeah, yeah. No, I wanted to say maybe, maybe, maybe... Um, a Wheel of Fortune, I guess that, that was the best top deck I could get. I think. Anyway, um, this was this was a good victory. Game number one here going to, uh, to uh, Derek. Congratulations. And we are going to go into our sideboards and we will catch up with you in game number two. Game number two. Here we go. So I'm on the play. At least that's something. You know, that's a big deal with my deck. Ooh, taking a mulligan though. So going down to six. We'll just have to wait. Let's see what I can do here. Turn one. Not uh, showing the hand here, it seems. Yes. Starting with a mountain. Ooh, and a black lotus. Cracking the lotus. What can I do? Do I have a ball lightning? Maybe turn one. Just deal six out of nowhere. That would be sweet. On the other hand, it does cost me two cards. Let's see what I can do. There goes the lotus. And what are we going to do? What card are we going to, to get? Oh, look at this. It is the Goblin King. Yeah, I remember this, of course. The altered Goblin King, David Bowie himself. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. He's, he's made his entrance. I mean, the only bad thing about this opening... Oh, look at this. Paralyzed. Yeah, this was so frustrating. Because now I cannot <laughs> untap. These Paralyzes are super good against my deck. Like, I didn't think about that at all, that those Paralyzes were a serious threat. I mean, without the Paralyzes in game one, I would have won, probably. And now again, I'm not doing anything else, just passing the turn. What's in my hand? Like, the rest must be total crap. Oh, man. This is so bad. There's a Mishra's Factory here by, by Dedek. Does he have another play? There's a Soul Ring and a pass. I mean, this is, this is, this is not, this is not going well. Oh man, I just need to draw like the right cards from this point forward or else I'm definitely going to lose this. I mean, remember my deck wants to go quicker than my opponent. I'm not doing that. Dedek is still very comfortable at a, at a solid 20. Yeah, this is really bad. I wonder what those five cards in hand are. Probably just cards with a CMC higher than one red. <laughs> you know, this for sure. This is called putting all your eggs in one basket. In this case, my plan was just to play David Bowie turn one, and probably that's all I wanted to do. But yeah, that's not, not smart. Derek tapping four. There's a zombie master, one floating, animating the factory with the one mana left. And then he can swing in for two. It's going to put me on 18. And uh, there I go again. And hopefully I can find something. Okay, tapping a red. Chain lightning. I mean, the chain lightning and, and the lightning bolts are good against these creatures, but it's not what I want to do, you know. I want to I want to attack and I want to play the burn on the life total of my opponent, not on the creatures. I mean, this is really bad, you know. Five cards in hand, passing the turn. And of course, he can attack me again for two, put me on 16, and probably he's got some cards to play out as well. There's another Swamp. I wonder what he's going to do. 
going to tap three. What can he do? He's got a lot of three drops in the deck. Perhaps another Cabo Ghoul. An Underworld Dreams. Oh, man. That is... Yeah, that's really annoying. And now he can use his Soul Ring to animate the Factory Swing in for two. Put me on 16. Yes. Yeah, this 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 match, I mean, <laughs> it's going really bad. But to be honest, I cannot complain because I've actually won all my other matches thus far. Like I'm on four wins and zero losses. So, um, you know, I've, 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 I've had pretty good draws the whole tournament except for, for this game. And actually, I have to say, I just think the answers of, of Dedek have been so good here. The Paralyze is really the MVP for Dedek, I feel. I mean, that card's doing so much work. There's another Underworld Dreams. That means two damage a turn. There's another attack. I'm already on eight. I'm going to drop to six. Oh, that is pretty horrible. And those vices are so bad, by the way, against Dedek. They've done nothing, nothing for me whatsoever. I'm on six and I'm passing the turn. Oh, this is horrible. Oh, no, okay, I'm on more life. Okay, so I put, I put a dice there. Okay, I put a dice on the deck to remember the triggers. Okay, so I'm on 11 then? Still bad. There's a force field. That's so good against Bolt Lightnings, by the way. There's the attack. Okay, there's a lightning bolt. So again, things I don't want to do. I don't want to play the direct damage from creatures, but I have to. Going to take two points of damage. I think we're going to drop to nine exactly. I'm going to play Goblins of the Flark. So now my deck is kind of starting to work. The problem that I have now is that double Underworld Dream. And, and uh, yeah. He's on 20. That's the problem here. I've dealt zero damage to him thus far. And we're, we're in turn 500 or something. Wow, my Goblin deck is, is working so poorly in, in this match. I wonder what, what Derek has. It looks like he's kind of like counting his mana. I can't see it. He's going to tap four. What is costing four in his deck? I wonder. I mean, if it's a drain life, you would just drain. Oh, he is going to drain the goblin. Which is now, of course, a 2-2. Two -two. I think I think I would have just drained me to be honest, but he's he's being he's being playing very safe. But he could have done a drain life for five on me, right? Then I would have dropped to four, and I would only have two more turns to go. So I, I personally I think that would have been a better decision. This works as well though. Like he's on twenty two, he's living the life. I'm gonna drop to five next turn. At least I found a mountain. The problem is I've got no answers to enchantments and I don't think I've boarded in my Neverneural's discs. Because I've got two in the side, but they're more against COP uh, red. Okay, there's another mountain that's something. Oh, this is fun. Now, this is a cool situation because now you get... Um, he's actually taking the damage. What he can do is he can use his force field. Oh, but he's not... Exactly now he sees it. He's like, hey, I've got a force field. He can use his force field and then only take one point of damage. So I love this. I love that it, this actually happened in the game. And yeah, I took a picture of this moment because it, <laughs> it's just... When the... When does this happen? Never. But I, I can already tell you, this was the best option that I had, even though it was just one damage. And that says a lot about the other cards in my hand. Like, this was my best option. But yeah, super cool, that that you got to use your force field against uh, my bow lightnings. I mean, that's fantastic. I love it. I can't complain. And I, I'm on five, so I'm going to drop to three here. There we see a Mishra's Factory. So I wonder if I've got a Blood Moon in hand. I can play the Blood Moon. Okay, there's a Goblin Balloon Brigade. Playing here on Borrowed Time, it feels right. I'm just, I'm just so dead. Going through my hand. And I mean, of course, I, I remember this very well because this was the one match where nothing seemed to work for, for my Goblin deck. And I was kind of surprised. Yeah, playing that Goblin Balloon Brigade. I really wonder what else I have in my hand. 
It's got to be total crap. Passing to turn here. Gonna tap three. A Royal Assassin. Sweet. Very cool card. Nice to see it in the deck. He could just animate an attack like I have to to jump. So we're actually gonna trade because it's a 2 2. Now I'm gonna untap. I'm gonna go to one. A measly life point. And the tap three. There's a chain lightning. A fork. What other cards do I have? And a bull lightning was in there. Nothing I could really use. So the fork chain lightning is kind of cool, but yeah, dealing six points, ending on 15, then I'm gonna die. But uh, yeah, wow. I gotta say, Derek, well, well done. And uh, you, you did a great job. Like, I had no chance. Here you see a picture, by the way, of Derek sitting at the table. I mean, he's, he's a great guy with great fun. Thank you for organizing uh, this tournament as well. Um, but we still have one last match to go. And the good news is that last match is actually uh, the finals of this tournament. And believe it or not, I made it to the finals. So despite the fact that I got completely annihilated here against Derek, uh, Derek didn't make it to the finals. In the finals, I'm gonna play against Yella, and this is the matchup. So again, I'm gonna play against a mono black deck. Uh, this time, it's not that many zombies though, but there are some really uh, cool cards in here as well. For example, the Demonic Hordes, which is very sweet. And of course, I see Willows, Royal Assassins. Like this is a more a control list than um, than the, the zombie list of, of Derek. Although that also has some control elements in it. Anyway, I'd let you be the judge of what kind of deck it is. But um, if you want to see me in the finals of the Zombie Cup, make sure to check in again next week. If you're not a subscriber yet, please hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. Because if you do that, then you don't miss a single update. You don't miss a thing on Timmy Talks, right? So you stay up to date. And talking about staying up to date, please take a moment to like, comment, and share this. Uh, because if you do, you're really uh, helping the channel move forward. And it is also completely free. So please take a moment to hit that like button. It is really appreciated. YouTube loves that stuff. And talking about supporting the show, you can also become a patron. Check out patreon.com slash timmytalks for all the details. One of the nice perks is that if you become uh, a sponsor of the show, it already starts for just $1. Your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video. What end scroll? This end scroll. Ik het als vinkertje somber kan zien.